Welcome back to this one. We're into the final segment of today's Price of Business. I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. And uh, really glad to be able to spend some time chatting with you. I have a, uh, uh, you know, I haven't really ch- chatted with uh, with uh, you in quite a while, Sigmund, just like this kind of small talk, you know, what's going on, but also about what's happening on the political front. And I uh, thought we'd spend a little time doing that. First of all, you went to Universal and I was surprised they let you out. <laughs> I thought they would have figured you worked there, you know. Yeah, and- well, I um, I definitely went to uh, Universal in Orlando, and and it was sweaty and hot and humid, and I had a good time. Got a little sun, you know. Uh, had fun. Oh, what is the song? Surrender. 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 Yeah. yeah. Probably yeah, that, apropos that's, to our. Thing that's going to come in in a minute. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah. So um, so I, I had a good time. I'm glad to be back, though. It was you know. Trudging around Universal Parks with a, a six-year-old who didn't want to ride any rides because he was very anxious and scared. Guess what? I kind of took the fun out of it. So I'm glad to be back. Yep, absolutely. We're glad to have you back. And so you've been to Disneyland. You haven't been to Disney World. Compare yeah. Disneyland to uh, Universal. Well, my wife wanted to go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter because she's a huge Harry Potter fan, okay? She's a geek. And so that's why we went to Universal. Disney don't have it. And you right. got to go to Universal. And it's funny because it's a, actually a Warner Brothers property, but they worked out a deal. So um, going there was neat. You know, that was cool. Um, as far as Disneyland versus Disney War or, or versus Universal, Universal is a little bit geared towards older kids and adults. It's a little bit more rock and roll, a little bit more, um, I, I guess, kind of a, a danger feel to it and so it's a little bit more off-putting for small kids mm-hmm. uh there's always an element of danger so your son was a little off his kilter a little bit yeah well he's anxious anyway so it was just you know whereas disneyland is all happy and and inviting and warm and loving and you know very different feels it's magical it is it really is there's I, nothing more magical than disney world well, I've been to Disneyland been to Disney. and Disney World, and they're just magical. There's, yeah, I've never been to Disney almost, World. It's almost like you feel it almost the minute you walk in the gates. There's kind of a magical quality about it that yeah. it's hard for me to leave Disneyland or Disney World. Uh, I think that we've made a decision that the next time we, we do one of these types of trips, it's going to be back to Disneyland because they had, in California Adventure Side, they had uh, a Bugs Land, which is based on a Bugs Life, and all those rides are geared towards smaller kids. They're still a lot of fun, but they're geared towards smaller kids. And I think that even though he's getting older, we went two years ago. You know, he rode more rides two years ago than he did this time. Um, I think that he's more comfortable with that. So to get him started there would be a good idea, and then move on. Cars Land is awesome. I mean, just awesome. It's beautiful. Uh, and all the other stuff on California Adventure. I loved Soren. They have at this, Universal. Uh, no, at uh, talking about Disneyland. Yeah, Disneyland. They yeah. had this wonderful uh, hang gliding ride called Soren, and it's just so relaxing and beautiful. So going back there, I think it's going to end up being a better time for us. Uh, live and learn, you know. I mean, we got a great deal in the hotel, and I love the hotel at Universal. It was awesome. Uh, very retro, nineteen fifties, nineteen sixties. Cabana Bay. If you go there, I definitely recommend Cabana it. Bay? Cabana Bay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so how'd your wife compare you? Uh, Cause she's been to both. Uh, how does she compare it to Disney world? Oh, well, Disney world is bigger. There's more to it. It's been a long time since she's been, but it's more overwhelming. Disney world is overwhelming. versus universal versus. Okay. Oh, she's uh, been to both now. Disney world and universal. Oh, Oh, and the Disneyland and universal. No, no. Uh, didn't you tell me that Meredith has been to Disney world, but it's when she was, a kid. I mean, oh, she was okay. So she can't really high, remember. Was, yeah. And it's so I can barely lot. remember Disneyland, and I was like 16, so she was younger than that. Disney and, World has changed a lot. Yeah. And, you know, now that they bought Star Wars, it's going to change even more. Even more. And so you're going to find that uh, both at Disneyland and Disney World, they're creating like Star Wars almost parks, to. a park in a park, you know? They probably should. So well, they it, put it in Future World or something like that. Even though it was a time long, long, long ago. To- Tomorrowland. Yeah, <laughs> hey, yeah, we yeah. can't put it in Tomorrowland because it was a time long, long ago. Oh, forget it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, we're actually going to, I think we'll enjoy going back to Disneyland once they've got the Star Wars stuff there. It's going to be awesome. Cause I'm, but, but so you're not interested in Disney World yet for a while? No, no, not till he's probably about 10 or 11. I think that'd be good because, man, at this point, knowing my kid, it's just going to be too much sensory overload. Yeah. Now, so something you could do the next time you go to Disneyland is go to Knott's Berry Farm, just you and your wife, you know what I'm saying? Or, or uh, oh, wait, you have to have babysitting. 
But but you know, or bring him as well. I mean, just for one night, one night in Osbury Farm for more grown for up more of the roller shows coasters and that kind of stuff. And well, yeah, you know, and, and I love Osbury Farm. It's one of my favorite parks. You could also go to Six Flags in Valencia and do more of the real roller coasters. But we have Six Flags here in Texas, so yeah, um, are good. It's very. I, good I will action. say, there's more roller coasters at Universal. Yeah, you don't find that at, at Disney at all. Uh-uh. Not really. Yeah, there's like Disney big, World big does but... Thunder Mountain Railroad. That's about it, and um, and Space Mountain, which is now I think they're turning into a Star Wars thing. I love Space Mountain. Yeah, I didn't. It, it was closed when we were there, so I didn't get a chance to ride it. Yeah, um, I've been on both, and there's they're both very similar actually. Disneyland and Disney World are both very similar. Love Space Mountain at Universal. I, I don't want to see anything. I might get scared. <laughs> <laughs> at Universal, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. One of the my favorite rides was a, an older attraction. It was called. The Mummy's Revenge or something like that. It was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. I rode that thing several times. And the Transformers 3D ride was awesome, too. So, I mean, it's not that we didn't have fun at all. It's just, you know, we had to do the child swap thing because my kid either wasn't big enough or he didn't want to ride the rides. And it just gets tedious after a while. Yeah, um, it does. But uh, but as I said, we got a great deal on the room, and that helped. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about the political front since okay. the last time you and I talked. Um, we have now got an actual nominee. I, actually, you know, Austin Peterson was running for the Libertarian nomination. He was from, on paper, my favorite candidate. The guy, in fact, I agree with him more than I agree with Ted Cruz. We're like 98%. I took that, that survey, which candidate is best for you, Austin Peterson, 98% was my view versus his. Um, he did not get the nomination. However, um, my good friend Gary Johnson, who I have had on the show a couple of times over the years, and William Weld of Massachusetts, two governors, you know, this is probably the most impressive ticket any party has had for quite some time. Well, to have two governors like that? Yeah. Yeah. I two mean, guys who are ready to be chief executives when the job requires it. Yeah, I guess. I mean, uh, how... Gosh, when John McCain and Sarah Palin ran, they kind of said that, oh, look, a senator, a lifetime senator and, <laughs> yeah, that, a, and a that governor. That was something against him, not for him. That yeah. means he, he, he has, has even less are... experience on making decisions. There's no decisions in the in the Senate, right. except for where you're going to eat lunch. Right. I mean, the Senate is a joke. Yeah. The Senate is like the worst preparation for a presidential candidate out there, in my opinion. Well, except for getting dressed up properly in suits and... Calling everybody friend, you know. I guess that's about it. And actually residing in D.C. That's about all that it, it does to provide. Right, they that. won't get lost in traffic, but they had a driver anyway. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but you, you become, in, you know, uh, kind of intimately familiar with with uh, the uh, the buildings at least. But I'll tell you, you're, I mean, as far as this new ticket with Johnson and Weld, yeah, the former governor of Massachusetts. I mean, very fiscal conservative, social liberal. It's an interesting ticket, but I think ultimately it's just going to end up making sure that Hillary Clinton wins the uh, the presidency. You know, the, if if they draw votes, I'm thinking it's going to be more true independent votes and and more Republicans, yeah, than Democrats. And so I think it's actually going to work against, uh, you know, taking down Hillary. That's my problem with with the third party uh, tickets like this. Now. Of course, in my opinion, if you vote for Hillary or for Trump, you're voting for you know the same a, person. A, a progressive, you're voting for the same person. You know, um, it, it's just a question of genitalia, really, is what it comes down and to. And I'm not so sure about that. I don't know why you wouldn't be. I mean, he's a blatant liar. The guy, the guy. Oh no, I meant he, the genitalia. Oh, <laughs> I mean that guy. You know, he, he's already come out. With, he just keeps on. You know, I keep remembering that line. I think it was in Nevada. You know, where he named all the constituencies he loves, and he really loves the poorly educated. I keep remembering that right, line. Right. You know, those are like you know he, he, he used the tonality of them being his favorite. You know, and then he comes up now with this list of his Supreme Court choices. Half of those people hate him. They have publicly scoffed him. The other half are people who are related to people who hate him. He wouldn't choose any of them just for personal reasons, because he's like the most petty personal person I've ever seen in in uh, politics. And so well, he continues to mock he continues to mock his supporters. Hilariously his VP uh short list, you know, would be probably people who uh, all would say, oh no 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 thanks but no I thanks. decline gracefully. Maybe not that gracefully. Yeah. So I mean it's like <laughs> Who wants to work with the guy? Who wants to be on the ticket with the guy? Because it's guilt by association, right? A- a- anybody that goes on that ticket with him is going to be just as hated. Yep. 
So it might as well be Sarah Palin. Well, that's who they talk a lot about, Sarah Palin. You know, and she's terrible. She's she just is terrible. She's the worst. I mean, terrible. seriously. She's a mockery is what she is. Yeah. Only only bigger mockery among women is, is Hillary. You know, Hillary Hillary is such the anti feminist and the fact that she tries to posture herself as one is unbelievable. Right. It's it's obnoxious. It's obnoxious. I don't know. I mean you and I were talking before we started talking. Uh, about uh, about how you think it's great because if the two parties suck, you got to vote for the third party to to show the two parties stop sucking so much. Yeah, but I, I just you know it's an investment. I look at a vote for a Gary Johnson as a vet, an investment because right now if, if we go ahead and vote for either one of them, and obviously you know the Democrats aren't even an option, but if you vote for either one of them, you're sending a strong message that it's okay to continue to produce horrific. Candidates, the worst candidates I've seen yeah, in my entire life. But, Maybe who've ever run? I don't know. But here's the problem. First of all, the establishment Republicans had nothing to do with Donald Trump. Nothing. They didn't want anything to do with them. They are uh, kicking and screaming at this point that they have to support him. And so, in that regard, it doesn't really speak as poorly to the Republican Party itself. What speaks poorly to the Republican Party is that they just suck. In Congress. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the Republican Party created an environment that a Donald Trump could rise in. In Congress. Yeah, right? by, We're by their about mediocrity, this... by their lack of uh, backbone, by exactly. their inconsistency, by being socialist light, when, when people are really looking for liberty. And they're so confused that they would think Trump is liberty, and, and, and Trump is anti-liberty. Trump, Trump oh, is, yeah. the, is the antithesis of liberty. Yeah, when, when you have Trump saying things like he wants to change the First Amendment so that he can sue, more easily sue his detractors. Right. That's all you need to know. That's right. He's ego driven. He is 100% ego driven. And, you know, I don't think the president of the United States, especially in this day and age, needs to be 100% ego driven type of a character. Um, If ever, but especially now. And he's pure ego. He's a narcissist. He he would be, if he spent time with a therapist, he would be clinically called a narcissist. And And you don't want a narcissist dealing with our foreign affairs. You don't want a narcissist handling our national security. For the last eight years, we've been calling Barack Obama a narcissist. Oh, he, the whole time. Barack Obama's a wannabe compared to Donald Trump. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, it's dangerous. Uh, The choice is dangerous. But ultimately, look, you either have to have faith that we're going to survive it. I hate when I, I hear nowadays people saying, you know, if Hillary gets elected or if Donald Trump gets elected, you know, the country's over. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's just. <laughs> He's waiting for me to shake my head in agreement with him. It's just. <laughs> it's it's no. And, and I refuse to do so. <laughs> it, the country the country's going to suck a little bit more, you know, but we'll still be around. And the problem is. Man, at this point, if you vote for either one, if you vote for none of them, if you vote for somebody else, I'm not sure that it, that the president even is the one that's going to take us down the right or wrong path at this point. I think I think we're in a, such a mess that it's really um, devolved to such a state that Kevin, I, I don't know how we get out of it. Mm-hmm. I don't think that there's uh, you know, if Ronald Reagan was around now, it wouldn't it wouldn't help. I just don't think it would help. No, it's it's, it's far worse. It was, it's far, far worse. Or if JFK, you know. Uh, if, you know, when if, Ronald Reagan was elected, and Ronald Reagan, you know, Ronald Reagan was a good president, but Ronald Reagan is, frankly, uh, there's plenty there that uh, led to where we are today in, in Reagan's administration. When Ronald Reagan got elected, we, have any, we didn't even have a trillion-dollar debt. In 1983, I was battling against a trillion dollar debt involved in, you know, calling, making calls to Congress, uh, grassroots campaign, et cetera. And, uh, and so, um, you know, the, it, it just shows you how terrible and under Reagan, by the time he was done, it was like a two and a half trillion dollar debt, you know? So the, you know, our, our he, darn he close outspent, to that. He outspent the Soviets. Yeah. That's yeah. what it was all about. And that's how, was, how we won the ending, Cold War. It was ending the Cold War and we could afford it and they couldn't. Right. And so, you know, that's, that's basically why we started, you know, ramping up the debt like that. Uh, now, we have had huge debts as, as a percentage of GDP in the past. But at this point, Kevin, we have no signs of even wanting to shrink it. Mm-hmm. We have no signs of, uh, we don't have any adults in the room in Washington, D.C. that are going to do the tough thing, cinch up the belt and say, no more spending on things that we can't afford. You know, if we don't have it in our budget, we're going to balance his budget this year. And from now on, if it ain't in the budget, it ain't getting spent. That's right. We're not going to keep digging a bigger hole. 
You know, so we don't have any adults in the room, Kevin. That's right. To do that. And yeah. that's not just the president. The president doesn't set that agenda. Yeah. Congress sets that agenda. I nailed that, by the way. In uh, 1981, or 1982, they broke the national debt. I, I lobbied against that. By the time Reagan left, it was $2.5 trillion. So it took from 1788 to 1983 to get to, get to $1 trillion. Trillion. He multi- doubled he, it. He 150% increased it in Eight seven years. years. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. But then look at look at where we went from Bush his last year in office to now with the right. debt. Yeah. It's way higher. Oh, absolutely. This guy is nuts. I mean, Bush was nuts. George George W., it, went, it was prolific spending under him. But, Kevin, the Republicans have been in power in Congress. I know. For how long? That's why I've been hypercritical. I've never really, I've never considered myself a Republican. So it's, but my point is, it, it doesn't matter who the president is. It's the, the it's jackasses systemic. in it's Congress. Systemic. That that are really causing the problem and are allowing it to to fester right. and continue. And so you know, Hillary, Trump, Johnson, whoever, it doesn't matter. Unless unless we have more adults in the room in Washington D.C., then we're going to keep kind of spiraling out of control with spending and uh, and corruption and greed and graft. And uh, crony capitalism and all those things that we hate are going to keep you know just going out of control. Yep, and I agree. that's that's ultimately what what is going to either make us you know survive as a country or not. I agree. I don't want to end up like Venezuela or Greece or any of these other countries that are really you know just going down the the poop chute. <laughs> he where, said that, not me. That's where we are right now. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, good segment. We, and, now do you want to go back and start yeah, we're talking gonna about end on, on Disneyland? <laughs> you want to talk about Disneyland now? Yeah, all right. It's a small world <laughs> after all. That's it. Uh, oh, yeah, but, you know, people vote, need to vote. They need to vote third party in order to wake up. To, <laughs> they need to wake up the first two parties. So There you uh, go. Absolutely. All right. When we come back tomorrow, we're going to have much more for you. I do want to remind you this show continues 24-7 at priceofbusiness.com. And also remember, the best content here always shows up over there at usdailyreview.com. Have a great day. Spend it wisely on this station.